everyone. My name is Shade Graves, Digital Innovation Lead for Zone 1 Schools, and I'm here with Sandra Hoke. K through 12 literacy instructional lead. And today we are going to be talking about using slides to create picture books. So the standard that we are going to be working on is standard 7.3 in the composition um, area. So Sandra, would you like to speak on that standard? Sure, um, 7.3 in composition is a standard that is present from kindergarten through 12th grade with all of the standards from KDE. Uh, this standard particularly addresses narrative writing. So narrative writing is a standard that kiddos begin working on in kindergarten and continue to shape and mold and progress in their deepen their understanding of the standard through 12th grade. Um, in this standard, students are expected to compose narrative writing and that narrative writing may take the form, form of poetry, uh, prose or drama. Uh, so there's, much voice and choice within that standard for students to find their way to tell to use uh, narrative to tell stories. So as the standard progresses across the continuum of sixth, seventh and eighth grade for middle school, it is pretty much the same for sixth and seventh. Would you like to speak a little bit about how it changes when we reach eighth grade? Sure. Um, narrative is one of those standards. If we think about college and career ready, um, narrative is one of the three main forms of writing that are addressed in the standards. There's narrative, um, there's argument, and there's informational. And when we think about college and career, informational and argument writing are part of college and career work more so than narrative writing. And so with this standard, KDE um, makes a shift from narrative as a focus for the pur purpose of telling a story to at eighth grade when there is a clear uh, detour from that line of thinking so that students are using narrative in service of information or in service of argument writing. So in other words, students aren't continuing to tell their story of their favorite birthday party in kindergarten and still telling the story of their favorite birthday party when they graduate high school. So there's a clear nod toward moving students toward being college and career ready by encouraging them to think about how does narrative help to further an argument? How does narrative deepen a reader's understanding of the information the writer is trying to convey? Okay, great. So when we look at the curriculum map for seventh grade language arts in module one, one of the summative performance tasks asks that students create a powerful story, a children's book to retell an episode from the narrative life of Frederick Douglass. So this is a culminating event that students would do after reading the narrative life of Frederick Douglass. Of course, with any writing piece, students are going to create a pre-write multiple drafts in go through the writing process. So our product that we're going to show you for artifact creation is for their final draft. And we wanna make sure that students are staying true to the standard and being assessed on the mastery of that standard. The artifact is simply a tool that they can use to show that they have demonstrated that mastery. So the pre-write, the drafts, all of those will be based on the standard mastery. And then when they get into creating their picture book, they will be assessed using the rubric uh, of their use of a digital tool. And this will be linked in the video notes that you can find at the bottom of the screen. So let's look at what an example of a performance task can look like when students have finished. This is a picture book that was created with Google Slides about Frederick meeting his brother and his sister for the first time. I use Google Slides to customize the book to resemble what a book would look like when it was printed out by inserting images, text, changing the page size, and many more options that students can do in order to create a picture book. When students are going to use Google Slides in order to create a picture book, there are many steps that they will follow and there are many ways that they can get this achieved. In the slide deck, the steps will be demonstrated step by step on each slide. And 
I am going to show you briefly what that will look like in action. I also want to point out that if you do not want students to create this template on their own, you may take a picture book template that you have created and force that through to students in Google Classroom. When you give each student a copy of the picture book template, then students will be able to add images and text and customize it without having to set up the picture book on their own. In order for students to create the picture book on their own, in the Omnibox, they will type slides.new to land to a new slides presentation. Once they are there, students will change the title of their book and I'm just going to title this one narrative test just for the purpose of our video. After they have done that, they are going to apply a layout. I like blank for cover art. And then they are going to change the size of the page by going to file page setup custom. From there, students can change the size of the slide. I like to use eight and a half by 11 so that when students print out their book, they won't have any formatting issues. After they have done that, students may use one of the themes that are already preloaded to Google Slides in order to have the theme of their book change. If they don't wanna do that, then they may also right click, change the background and choose a color that is of their liking. From there, students will insert a title by inserting a text box. And of course they can change the font size just as they would with any slideshow or document presentation. They can insert an image for their cover art from their computer, from the web, from their drive, from multiple places. For today, I'm just going to insert from the web And then they will add customization by adding that the book was written by them. I just want to point out that a way to take this up a little bit is to have students co-author. One of the great things about Google Docs is that at any point, students can work with people in the same class as them or people in the same school, anybody from all over. So that's another way that students can take up the blended learning model that they can do. It can either be a substitution where they're just, they, this is something they can do on paper or we can augment it or we can modify it. If you really wanna get into the modification, have students to collaborate together or have students um, narrate the book once they have finished with it. So as they continue to write, they will continue to add slides and change the background and add text boxes to include the writing that they have on their drafts. So I like to leave a blank page as any book has after the cover art. And then I like to go ahead and start with writing my actual story. Again, all students have to do in order to complete their book is to change the colors, insert text boxes and images. And then once they have finished, they can share this to their backpack straight from Drive, or if they need to, they can download it into a PDF document. And that way they could be able to print it off and have a hard copy of their artifact. So after you have finished writing the drafts and would like for students to have a polished artifact for their backpack, please feel free to refer to the slides and have students create a picture book using Google Slides. So Sandra, would you like to add on anything for teachers to keep in mind? Sure, two uh, quick pieces to add to what you've shared. Uh, we want to make sure that students have an authentic audience for this work. So as students are crafting these picture books, we need to be thinking with them and as a thinking partner um, alongside them to think about who is what audience would care about uh, their product. So that may be an Amazon audience or the public library, but an authentic audience is critical. And also we want to ensure that teachers have clarity around the success criteria for this product. So this uh, product that students are generating, we should have aligned with a rubric that will allow the students and the teachers to have clarity about how well the product meets the intent of the standard. 
Okay, thank you so much. And then one last thing that I wanted to point out is that although we use the uh, culminating event in the EL curriculum, as students are in fourth and fifth grade, I feel like this artifact might be able to be tailored to some experiences for students as well. So keep in mind that this isn't just for that particular culminating experience. It can be tailored to fit the needs of your classroom. So thank you, Sandra, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. And teachers, I hope you find this useful for your classroom.